about muck. Someone isn't gonna like that. Well, at least Twiggy's on my side. What a bummer. It's nice to have at least one friend. I'm sorry, Twiggy. Friends. Friend. Yes, yes. It, it, it is nice to have one friend or two friends. And in Buck Rogers' case, a friend that is an ambuquad, a robot, an ambuquad. They called him an ambuquad, Twiggy. This is Will. This is Sci Fi Guy. And we're talking uh, Buck Rogers, and we're talking specifically his robot pal, Tweaky. That's right, Tweaky. Now, this I I stumbled on today, and I wasn't I wasn't even going to do any Buck Rogers uh, anything on it. Though I love the show, I did. It's it's one of the. I mean, it's, you had to be there, I guess. I don't know how well it's aged. I think it's aged fairly well. The last time I saw it, you know, um, it's pretty good. You know, dated effects, yada yada. We know all that. But in terms of the, the fun factor, the you know, the pure fun and and sort of space opera sci-fi fantasy factor, you can't get, you know, I don't think you can get really better, better than Buck Rogers in a way. More the character, of course, more the, you know, uh, the spirit of the character and certainly the, the, the Gil Gerard uh, 1979 Buck Rogers in the 25th century is a, you know, more than decent uh representation depiction it'd be nice to say you know to see a remake uh, they've been i guess they've been talking about one for years we'll see but we're talking about tweaky the robot uh and of course the voice was the legendary mel blank of bugs bunny fame of daffy duck porky pig you're talking about one of the most versatile recognizable and popular voice artists, vocal artists, and that's Mel Blanc, and he did the voice of Tweaky. Now, it's interesting because he didn't do every episode because he got sick, and then they brought in a new uh, a new voice. Uh, this is from the wiki. Buck Rogers in the 20th century is an American sci-fi adventure TV series produced by Universal. The series ran for two seasons between September of 1979 and April of 1981. And they also had a feature-length pilot that was released as a theatrical film, which is a real fucking hoot. I mean, just seeing that alone, um, the, the opening is sort of like a cheap uh, James Bond, Buck, Buck as Bond, and it, it, it is something to see. And the, and this song is like a theme song. I mean, the song is a little corny, but overall it's, it's pretty uh, uh, spectacular, pretty epic. All right, the film and TV series was were developed by Glenn A. Larson and Leslie Stevens. Leslie Stevens is from the, of course, the Outer Limits fame, and Glenn Larson, Battlestar Galactica, Knight Rider, on and on. Uh, very, very prolific. And, of course, it's based on the character Buck Rogers, created in 1928 by Philip Francis Nowlin. And it had been previously been featured in comic strips, novellas, and serial films. So on TV and radio. Now, Mel, of course, as I said, is one of the most recognizable vocal artists in years. He, uh, Melvin Jerome Blanc, uh, American voice actor and radio personality whose career spanned, spanned over 60 years during the golden age of radio. He provided character voices and vocal sound effects for comedy radio, including those of Jack Benny, Abbott and Costello, Burns and Allen, and Judy Canova. I didn't know he did... Um, vocal sound effects, which it doesn't surprise me, but that is great. He was so flexible. Of course, Bugs Bunny, as I said, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, and mo most of the other characters from Looney Tunes. So he did most of them. He did Mr. Spacely on the Jetsons and Barney Rubble, Fred Flintstone sidekick on the Flintstones. He's referred to as the man of a thousand voices. And I stumbled on this article and the uh, podcast was born. This is from Hollywood Outbreak. This is about a year ago. Buck Rogers checked a bucket list item for Gil Gerard befriending Mel Blanc. Following the success of Star Wars, America's TV networks tried their best to launch new shows set in outer space. 
NBC offered the somewhat tongue-in-cheek Buck Rogers and the 25th Century a show that paired out of this world adventure with many moments of levity. And many came from the show's requisite robot, Tweaky. The voice of Tweaky was provided by one of the most famous throats in Hollywood, none other than Mel Blanc, who is legendary for playing so many of the Looney Tune characters. Gil Gerard, who played Buck Rogers in the series, said that getting to meet Mel Blanc, along with the original Buck Rogers, Buster Crab, was one of the highlights of his career. So this is what really, um, you know, attracted me to doing the podcast. He, this is what, you know, Gil Gerard loved about um, being Buck Rogers, that he, you know, that's one of his sort of bucket list sort of moments of doing the series. And this is, I think, a little audio. Let's see, I'm trying to cue up some audio of Gil talking about it. Let's see. Never worked with him. Um, I met Mel in the second season when they changed his voice. Um, because what I did was I said, either give it back to Mel or find another Buck Rogers. Wow, that's something. So he, he spoke up for Mel because... He, I guess Mel Blanc had become sick during the run and the, uh, and then they had to replace him with, uh, with, I guess, yeah, with Bob Elia, El Elie, voice of Tweaky second season episodes. And then Mel Blanc came back because Gil Gerard, I guess, uh, spoke up for him. So, yeah, so that was, you know, what a what a great endorsement from your you know your lead uh, actor to come back to work. It says yeah because of his illness Mel Blanc was briefly replaced by Bob Elia or Elia was the voice of Tweaky for the first seven episodes of the second season. After recovering, Blanc returned to the role for the final six episodes of the season, though no explanation was given for the change in Tweaky's voice. And if I remember, I do. No disrespect to Mr. Elia, yay, uh, the Bob Elia, the actor, but it was pretty, pretty bad. I mean, the great thing about Tweaky was that he was kind of, you know, kind of sounded like a guy from the Bronx or Brooklyn, from the hood, and, you know, just a, a, a regular everyday guy, you know, buck, buck, what's going, buck, you know, just, just fun and, and, you know, fun and funny. And Bob Elia, I don't know, I guess they directed him, he just sounded like a, like a weird kitty, like, you know, hello, back. <laughs> it was just really kind of embarrassing. But so there you have it. I mean, Buck Rogers, um, in terms of that show, um, even though it only lasted two seasons, it was a pretty big hit when I was a kid. Everyone watched it. And I still have, again, I've, I've gone back to it. And it still holds up. You know, um, Gary Coleman is one of, in one of the episodes, some really fun guest stars. And it's a great time capsule of that time you know, from, from 79 to 81. And I remember this, I recall that, uh, what is it? Glenn Larson, who worked and created Battlestar Galactica, I guess when they were doing Buck, uh, Battlestar was just ending. So they used a lot of the same sort of sets and, you know, the, the spaceships or opticals, and they kind of reused them. So even though they were recycled and reused, it brought, you know, a more sort of expensive uh, flash to Buck because of Battlestar. And that was pretty much welcome. Good stuff. So there you have it. Buck and Blanc. Mel Blanc and Buck Rogers. Buck and Blanc. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are subscribing. If not, you can do so free. Or if not, you can do the paid people for four ninety nine. You get exclusives. You get some interviews and goodies that the uh, freebies don't get. Either or, we love hearing your feedback. I love getting emails. I do. And, you know... This was cool, Will, blah, blah, and uh, it's all good. It's all welcome, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and what we're bringing you. So live long and prosper, beady, 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 and go watch Buck Rogers, and we'll see you soon.